Good morning. Let's begin our service by singing hymn number 108. Here, O my Lord, I'd see thee face to face. Here would I touch and handle things unseen. Here grasp with firmer hand the eternal grace, and all my weariness upon thee lean. Hymn number 108.
The scriptural this morning will be given by Heidi from Maryland. Matthew and Psalms In those days came John the Baptist, preaching in the wilderness of Judea, and saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Then went out to him Jerusalem, and all of Jordan and Judea, and all the region round about, and were baptized of him in Jordan, confessing their sins. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees come to his baptism, he said unto them, O generation of vipers, who hath warned you to flee from the wrath to come, bring forth therefore fruits meet for repentance. Then cometh Jesus from Galilee to Jordan unto John to be baptized of him. But John forbade him, saying, I have need to be baptized of thee, and comest thou to me? And Jesus answering said unto him, Suffer it to be so now, for thus it becometh to fulfill all righteousness. Then he suffered him. And Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water, And lo, the heavens were opened unto him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting upon him, and to a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. O Lord, thou hast searched me and known me. Thou knowest my down-sitting and my uprising. Thou understandest my thought afar off. Thou companest my path and my lying down and set and are acquainted with all my ways. For that is, there is not a word in my tongue, but lo, O Lord, that thou knowest it altogether. Thou hast beset me behind and before and laid my thine hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high. I cannot attain it. Whither shall I go from thy spirit, or whither shall I flee from thy presence? If I ascend up into heaven, thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. If I take the wings of the morning, and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there shall thy hand lead me, and thy right hand shall hold me. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts, and see if there be any wicked way in me, and lead me in the way everlasting. We will now have a moment of silent prayer and follow with the Lord's Prayer and its spiritual interpretation as given in the Christian Science textbook. Our Father, which art in heaven. Our Father, Mother, God, all harmonious. Hallowed be thy name. Adorable one. Thy kingdom come. 
Thy kingdom is come. Thou art ever present. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Enable us to know as in heaven, so on earth, God is omnipotent, supreme. Give Give us this day our daily bread. Give us grace for today. Feed the famished affections. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And love is reflected in love. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And God leadeth us not into temptation, but delivereth us from sin, disease, and death. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. For God is infinite, all power, all life, truth, love, over all and all. Let's now sing hymn number 423. Give me, O Lord, an understanding heart that I may learn to know myself in thee, to spurn the wrong and choose the better part, and thus from sinful bondage be set free. Hymn number 423.
welcome to the Sunday morning service of the Plainfield Christian Science Church Independent. We have members and participants from around the world. And a special welcome this morning to visitors and members, Linda Shardy from Pennsylvania and Luann and Lori from New York State. You can find us on our website, plainfieldcs.com. You can also find us on YouTube, where we have well over 1,500 audio and video selections of services, articles, songs, hymns, and other things that will inspire and entertain. You can also find us on SoundCloud, Facebook, and Twitter. So whatever medium you like, to find things on, we hope you will find us. Our website has articles that will help in any situation you could ever face. The most recent issue of our magazine, Love is the Liberator, is dedicated to the proper education of our children. And that whole magazine and all of the articles on it can be found on our website. We begin each Sunday morning with our roundtable discussion at 10 a.m., which is a training session in Christian science for those who are serious about learning who and what God is and what that means for us. We also have a testimony meeting every Wednesday evening at 8.15 p.m., where you can hear testimonies of healings and lives changed through the study and practice of Christian science. And you can listen to all of our services, either on our website, on YouTube, or from your telephone on a teleconference number that we provide. Also on Sundays at 11 a.m., we have a Sunday school for children, and that class is also conducted via teleconference, so if you don't live in the area, and have a child who would like to attend Sunday school, please call us. We'll give you the number, and your child will be most welcome. And at every service, we have a nursery available for infants and toddlers. So bring the whole family. There will not be a Bible study class next Saturday. We're taking a break for the summer. So stay tuned and We'll let you know when that will start up again. Everyone is welcome here, and that includes all of you who are listening and participating from around the world. We will now have the reading of a testimony from the chapter entitled Fruitage from Science and Health, which attests to the healing power obtained just by reading the Christian Science textbook. And that reading will be given this morning by Shahidat from Maryland. On page 622, Health and Peace Gained. About nine years ago, I was drawn to Christian science by a relative whose many afflictions had given place to health and harmony and whose loving gratitude was reflected in every word and deed. The thought came to me, God indeed healeth all our diseases. My first reading of science and health was without understanding. I was full of darkness and gloom, and it was laid aside for a time. The good seed had been sown, however, and ere long the reading was resumed, and with such interest that my afflictions disappeared like mist before the morning sun. Asthma, thought to be hereditary, neuralgia in an aggravated form, and besides these, the tobacco and liquor habit of many years standing left me. Bless the Lord, he sent his word and healed me, for the reading of science and health brought to my consciousness the truth that makes free. From S. Shelman, Georgia. The lesson sermon for this morning can be found on page four of the Independent Christian Science Quarterly. Subject, Sacrament. 
Golden text, John. And now, O Father, glorify thou me with thine own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. Responsive reading is from Psalms. Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness. According unto the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my transgressions, and my sin is ever before me. Behold, thou desirest truth in in the inward parts, and in the hidden part thou shalt make me to know wisdom. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, and uphold me with thy free spirit. Then shalt thou be pleased with the sacrifices of righteousness. Fairly from Maryland, we'll read from the Bible. The Holy Bible. Leviticus. And ye shall be holy unto me, for I the Lord am holy, and have severed you from other people that ye should be mine. Romans I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed, by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. For I say, through the grace given unto me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. Recompense to no man evil for evil. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. If it be possible, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. Second Timothy. The foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal. The Lord knoweth them that are his, and let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. But in a great house there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and of earth, and some to honor and some to dishonor. If a man therefore purge himself from these, He shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified, and meet for the master's use, and prepared unto every good work. Matthew. Now the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the disciples came to Jesus, and the disciples did as Jesus had appointed them, and they made ready the Passover. And when the even was come, he sat down with the twelve. And as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it 
and break it and gave it to the disciples and said, Hey, Eve, this is my body. He took the cup and gave thanks. He gave it to them saying, Drink ye all of it, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. But I say unto you, I will not drink henceforth of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. Then come, cometh Jesus with them unto a place called Gethsemane, and saith unto the disciples, Sit ye here while I go and pray yonder. And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, and began to be sorrowful and very heavy. Then saith he unto them, My soul is exceeding sorrowful, even unto death. Carry ye here and watch with me. And he went a little further and fell on his face and prayed, saying, O oh, my Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt. And he cometh unto the disciples, and findeth them asleep, and saith unto Peter, What? Could ye not watch with me one hour? Watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Romans. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein. As Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. For in that he died, he died unto sin once. But in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. Likewise, reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness? Being then made free from sin, ye became the servants of righteousness. But now being made free from sin and become servants to God, ye have your fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting life. For the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. 1 Peter, he also, as lively stones, are built up a spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Hebrews, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually, that is, the fruit of our lips giving thanks to his name. 
but to do good and to communicate, forget not. For with such sacrifices, God is well pleased. Pray for us. For we trust we have a good conscience in all things willing to live honestly. But I beseech you the rather to do this, that I may be restored to you the sooner. Now the God of peace, that brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Florence from Georgia will now read. I will read correlative passages from our textbook, Science and Health with Key to the Scriptures, by Mary Baker Eddy. In ancient Rome, a soldier was required to swear allegiance to his general. The Latin word for this oath was sacramentum, and our English word sacrament is derived from it. The true sense is spiritually lost if the sacrament is confined to the use of bread and wine. The disciples had eaten, yet Jesus prayed and gave them bread. This would have been foolish in a literal sense, but in its spiritual signification, it was natural and beautiful. Jesus prayed. He withdrew from the material senses to refresh his heart with brighter, with spiritual views. A great sacrifice of material things must precede this advanced spiritual understanding. The highest prayer is not one of faith merely. It is demonstration. Such prayer heals sickness and must destroy sin and death. It distinguishes between truth that is sinless and the falsity of sinful sense. Wisdom and love may require many sacrifices of self to save us from sin. One sacrifice, however great, is insufficient to pay the debt of sin. Petitions bring to mortals only the results of mortals' own faith. We know that a desire for holiness is requisite in order to gain holiness. But if we desire holiness above all else, we shall sacrifice everything for it. When the human element in him struggled with the divine, our great teacher said, Not my will but thine be done. That is, let not the flesh but the spirit be represented in me. This is the new understanding of spiritual love. It gives all for Christ or truth. It blesses its enemies, heals the sick, casts out error, raises the dead from trespasses and sins, and preaches the gospel to the poor, the meek in heart. If all who ever partook of the sacrament had really commemorated the sufferings of Jesus and drank of his cup, they would have revolutionized the world. 
If all who seek his commemoration through material symbols will take up the cross, heal the sick, cast out evils, and preach Christ or truth to the poor, the receptive thought, they will bring in the millennium. All must sooner or later plant themselves in Christ, the true idea of God, that he might liberally pour his dear-bought treasures into empty or sin-filled human storehouses was the inspiration of Jesus' intense human sacrifice. In witness of his divine commission, he presented the proof that life, truth, and love heal the sick and the sinning and triumph over death through mind, not matter. Jesus' history made a new calendar, which we call the Christian era, but he established no ritualistic worship. He knew that men can be baptized, partake of the Eucharist, support the clergy, observe the Sabbath, make long prayers, and yet be sensual and sinful. His students slept. He said unto them, Would ye not watch with me one hour? Would they not watch with him who, waiting and struggling in voiceless agony, held uncomplaining God over a world? There was no response to that human yearning. And so Jesus turned forever away from earth to heaven, from sense to soul. Remembering the sweat of agony which fell in holy benediction on the grass of Gethsemane, shall the humblest or mightiest disciple murmur when he drinks from the same cup and think or even wish to escape the exalting ordeal of sin's revenge on its destroyer. Truth and love bestow few palms until the consummation of a life work. Our baptism is a purification from all error. Our church is built on the divine principle love, We can unite with this church only as we are newborn of spirit, as we reach the life which is truth and the truth which is life by bringing forth the fruits of love, casting out error and healing the sick. Our Eucharist is spiritual communion with the one God. Our bread is which cometh down from heaven, is truth. Our cup is the cross. Our wine, the inspiration of love, the drought our master drank and commended to his followers. Paul had a clear sense of the demands of truth upon mortals physically and spiritually when he said, Present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. But he who is begotten of the beliefs of the flesh and serves them can never reach in this world the divine heights of our Lord. Paul and John had a clear apprehension that as mortal, as mortal man achieves no worldly honors except by sacrifice, so he must gain heavenly riches by forsaking all worldliness. We should consecrate existence, not to the unknown God whom we ignorantly worship, but to the eternal builder, the everlasting father, 
to the life which mortal sense cannot impair nor mortal belief destroy. We must realize the ability of mental might to offset human misconceptions and to replace them with the life which is spiritual, not material. Consecration to good does not lessen man's dependence on God, but heightens it. Neither does consecration diminish man's obligations to God, but shows the paramount necessity of meeting them. One's consecration to Christ is more on the ground of demonstration than of profession. In conscience, we cannot hold to beliefs outgrown, and by understanding more of the divine principle of the death-led Christ, we are enabled to heal the sick and to triumph over sin. I now invite the congregation to kneel in Holy Communion and repeat with me our Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who in the heart in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debts. And but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Let us now sing hymn number 300. The words of this hymn are by Mary Baker Eddy. Saw ye my Savior, heard ye the glad sound, felt ye the power of the word? T'was the truth that made us free and was found by you and me in the life and the love of our Lord. Hymn number 300.
My special guest this morning, she's a, a student of mine, Maria, and she's going to help me out this morning. Thank you. Let us now sing hymn number 324. Take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to thee. Take my moments and my days. Let them flow in ceaseless praise. Take my hands and let them move at the impulse of thy love. Hymn number 324.
I will read the scientific statement of being from our Christian Science textbook, Science and Health with Key to the Scriptures, followed by correlative passages from 1 John, 3rd chapter. There is no life, truth, intelligence, nor substance in matter. All is infinite mind and its infinite manifestation. For God is all in all. Spirit is immortal truth. Matter is mortal error. Spirit is the real and eternal. Matter is the unreal and temporal. Spirit is God, and man is his image and likeness. Therefore, man is not material. He is spiritual. Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And every man that has this hope in him purifieth himself, even as he is pure. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy, to the only wise God our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and ever. Amen.